Hello YouTube world and thank you for joining me on the video today. Much appreciated. Thank you for all your support. Um, please don't forget to give a like and thumbs up and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button as well. Um, that would be great if you could do that. And uh, I'm appreciating your comments and your feedback as well. Uh, good and bad. Um, I'm doing this video today uh, minus the background music because uh, someone commented they didn't like the background music and they couldn't hear me talk too much. So and it kept replaying itself. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But um, as long as you don't mind my waffle, <laughs> well, we'll go with that and we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, today we've got the layout up and running, guys. So I'm going to show you some uh, some trains running. We've got some stock out on the layout at the moment. We've got, what have we got over here? We've got a Lima Class 52 Western, Western Pioneer, which is what we reviewed the other day. We've got a mighty Backman 9F, little baby 29 from Hornby and the Backman G2A Super D on that road as well. So we're gonna use these locos as our test bed um, subjects today to go around the layout and show you things running. So just a quick introduction to my layout. It's a six by four um, twin track layout with a passing loop and some sidings. It's analog, not DCC. So I'm using an analog control system and analog wiring. Uh, it's actually resting over uh, my bed as you can see, and it's actually clear of the bed. And before anyone asks, no, I'm not that dedicated that I'd go to bed with this thing um, in position. <laughs> Wake up in the morning, have a stretch and play some trains. No, I'm not that, not that uh, uh, insane for doing that. Anyway, it's on these baseboard legs that I've designed and built myself. Uh, and as you can see, my baseboard underneath here has got all these lightning holes, which is ideal for your wiring. Now, um, we've got a set of baseboard legs also underneath there, just in case you're wondering. So this whole system as mentioned is this DC um, analog. Now I wanna just touch on something briefly, really quickly. Um, this isn't being biased, so it's not at the older generation or the new generation of the younger children watching this, but it's everyone. Um, even myself, I can, can get, I can get a little bit flustered with wiring and if you don't think things out um, methodically and how things go. So just a little bit of a pointer. Um, if you're wiring up a model railway for the first time and you're following a track plan, for example, this track plan here um, is a horn, is from the Hornby book of track plans. I don't know when it was when it came out, but the actual name of the plan is 2E, E for elephant, 2E. And um, although I've got it from Google, a bunch of track plans that are on there, um, it didn't, rather naughtily, didn't give you the actual list of track parts you need, i.e. colour-coded R600, 601, 607, 605 and 609 curves, for example, that are normally stamped on each track section in, in colour on the actual diagram. Um, mine wasn't. So it did say, rather cheekily, you may have to use alternative track sections or flexi-track to make up the arrangement. So... I had to do a little bit of cutting and shutting, uh, as we do in the hobby. So, for example, recently I removed the, the radius, the 605 first radius curves here. We knocked those out of the way and we put in some second radius curves, which are a bit more gradual. And we did a little bit of cutting and shutting there to make that up to that section. Um, quite simple to do, um, but if you're not sure, get someone to help you. A uh, grown-up or uh, another, someone in the model railway community, like a hobby uh, club will help you do that but anyway it's, it's pretty simple to do but normally if you follow a track plan um, from Hornby um, normally everything will fit on the baseboard that you've chosen uh, providing you measure first of all the baseboard size where it's going to go and obviously you measure up um, the track plan well, if it will fit on there or not normally if you if you look up in a track plan book uh, eight by four for example baseball plans it will give you all the track parts you need and it will show you the dimensions and it will, it will say this will fit um, so getting the track physically laid is really important and getting it nice and level so there's no um, unevenness and everything sits nice and smooth which is why i ch chose to use um, this time some cork underlay and as you'll hear in a moment it really does reduce the noise and it gives it a nice cushion. And it also, the profile looks nice as well uh, once we've ballasted and finished the track. So the other thing as well is wiring up. 
Um, like I said, my layout is analog, uh, which means it's not DCC. It's good old fashioned analog. Um, wire straight from the track to the controller, job done. So for example, again, uh, we've, I've color coded my track. So we've got green for track one, red for track two. May drop underneath the baseboard and come out through this control panel shelf I've built myself. Um, they go into this little box of tricks here. This is my Gauge Master um, Type 2 high frequency twin track cleaner. It's a piece of electronics basically that you put the direct track feed from the baseboard into here. And then you have an identical pair of wires for each track coming out of here. And a 16 volt supply feed at the back and it all goes into here. And the way it works is, obviously, on the left of the shot, the green wires for track one. The middle wires, you've got a red and green for the 16 volt feed and the red pair of wires for track two. And in theory, what should happen is um, it electronically cleans your track when the train is, is sitting on there. Um, when there's no trains on the track, uh, both lights should be on. And as you can see today, they're not on. Why? Because it's broken. <laughs> I've had this thing since 94. So it's, it's done a lot of uh, years of service uh, um, on my layouts in the, in the past. So today uh, I phoned up Gauge Master and told them the problem. They said, basically, send it back to us in the post and we will fix it and send it back to you. Don't worry, because uh, they've got a lifetime warranty in all their Gauge Master products only. So that's great. I did the same with their Transformer a while ago. I had some problems with that, as mentioned, and uh, sent it back to them. They fixed it as good as new so i'm going to get this off to them in the post but in the meantime even though this doesn't work at the moment the good thing is well, the way it's wired up i can still have power to the track and run my trains regardless and when i do send it off in the post i'll have to go back to the days of using one of these things <laughs> track rubber um but i do anyway i always tend to buff the track over with that regardless anyway um a little bit about um wiring to your track so that's the sort of the what the, the the wiring hard side of it uh in terms of where you hardwire things um but in terms of the track itself um short circuits i'm not on about short circuit as in that's a short circuit around the layout but electronically a short circuit why would you get a short circuit um it's quite important actually where you put your feeds um the golden rule of wiring up a model railway um, in terms of colour coding your wires and keep them neat that's one side of it but the important thing is where you introduce the power to your layout um, and for example here we've got a crossover and, and obviously a set of diamonds there uh, technically two crossovers um, the important thing is whether you've got a single or multiple sets of points you should always introduce the power just a little bit from what's called the toe end of the switch. If I bring this in a little bit closer with the old eye theorem. Um, on a set of points, on a real railway set of points, the full size train set, um, this end of the points where the, the switch goes over, this is known as the toe end of the of a set of points. And then up here, you've got the heels. So this is the, or the, the tips of the switch or the toe end, whatever you want to call it. I always used to call it the toe end of the points. But before the toe end of the switch is, you should, that's roughly where you want to put your power before those points. That way it will feed everything else in the layout will be electrically fed um, correctly. If you put them past there, like you put it here or you put it up here or around that curve bit, um, there's a danger that you'll, you'll, you'll lose power. Um, even though technically you won't, you, you might get some problems. Um, I've encountered that in the past. But anyway, just a bit of sound advice. No matter how many points or crossovers you've got, whether it's an elaborate system or something simple like this, golden rule, put your wires before the switches. Um, these points here, they're all Hornby set track straight out of the box. And these are insul frog points or what is known as insul frogs. You get two types of points. You can get insul frogs, which are these ones where the, the V part in the middle of the switch is the frog. If you really want to get technical, splice rail, point rail, wing rail. Um, going back to my P-Way days there. Um, but anyway, that's that's the frog. It's plastic. 
it's an insulated piece of track there and it basically helps the point uh, retain its insulative purposes um, in short basically you don't get a short but with an electro frog point this bit is metal it's live so you have to think carefully um, when you wire it up you have to use what's called insulated um, rail joiners normally in this area um, stop you getting a dead short across those um, anyway I'm not an expert on um, electro frog points if you want to find out more about electro frog points how they work and the principle of those there are some very good videos up on the uh, YouTube community that will help you out with that. Again, I can't talk much about that because I don't have much experience. If I was to build a bigger layout one day, I probably would go for those. But in the meantime, I'm using these because they're nice and simple. Um, and there we are. But you should not get a short with these at all. Um, the only reason you'd get a short, a serious short with an electro frog point is either it's wired up wrong or uh, you've got something metallic line across the track somewhere on the layout or you've got some clutter that's not been seen and you just forgot about something and it's causing a, sh a general short uh, you don't want that so another good rule of thumb is um, whether you've got a layout this small medium size or you've got a large layout it's all too easy I mean my layouts say it's it's, it's um, portable so once I finish working on it and I'm doing bits and pieces everything gets tidied away and it gets put away um, but the the other golden rule of model railway building, a uh, little tip I'm going to give you, is what's called good housekeeping. Um, just like the real railway, you don't have things cluttered up everywhere on your track because it's very tempting to leave stuff out. I know we all do it and we've all um, been there some stage. We're building our model railway and doing track alterations and sometimes if we're lucky enough to have a permanent room for the layout, um, things can get left on the layout, which is okay, but try and keep it all... Um, away from the track and that way you won't get short circuits and it's good housekeeping and also you won't have any derailments um, that's just me if you're an un if you are by nature an untidy person um, that's okay we're all different and we all think differently but um, it just aids with the general running of your railway to try and get good habits um, keeping all your tools off the layout for example I've got a little control shelf there I've got a screwdriver and a track rubber um, but any tools that I use, um, they'd normally go there. Um, if I'm doing any track work on the baseboard, I need to lift some track or do some cutting and shutting or whatever. And I need to cut some track or do something. Yeah, there's going to be tools and mess on here. But I always make sure it's swept and tidy at the end of the, the project when it's finished and keep everything nice and tidy. If you look after your baseboard and your track and you keep things tidy and you look after things, it will look after you for many years. Um, that's just me. I'm just a, a very pedantic person when it comes to being neat and tidy on the layout. But yeah, rule of thumb, put everything away. And you don't lose stuff as well. Um, if you leave stuff lying around on, on your layout when you're building things, uh, nine times out of ten, that two weeks down the line, no pun intended, um, you're going to want to find that object or that tool or that missing piece you need and think, oh my goodness, where did I leave that? I've lost it. And then it turns up because you've left it on the layout or it's on the floor and it's gone into oblivion and you will learn a new colourful language. Anyway, um, that's a bit about that. So again, just keep it simple, guys, um, with your wiring and with things in general. Um, good housekeeping is, is the key um, to looking after your railway, and it will look after you. Anyway, let's get on and run some trains, shall we? Because that's what we all came to see today. I'm sure you did. So let's bring out this 9F. So first of all, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to... Um, power this train I can do it from the second track um, but what I'm going to be doing is, is setting that crossover to reverse and I've got those switches over there that are set to reverse for it to come out and basically complete that move so we're going to go from the side ends via track 2 across over the track 1 
beautiful. There she goes. All right, let's bring her over just to a stop there. And then we'll do, we'll normalize this crossover. Again, um, all my points that you see here, I've purposely switched sides. So now I've got the control uh, panel side of things uh, with the points all over to my side, as opposed to right over the back. Um, it's easy to reach. And even though I'm gonna electronically motorize all my switches on the layout, um, they're just easy to reach. And obviously if I bring trains in and out of service, it's easy to change the points without having to lean over too far and and uh, make things awkward. Anyway, um, a cool little feature about my analog controller. You set the direction like so, obviously to forward, which is for that 9F now. We then turn this switch to on and make sure that the knob is counterclockwise to the off position. Then we'll select the speed to about say 50 on the regulator. And then if we just release that all the way, there she goes. <clears throat> and as you can see, she's quite happy. Now, uh, I could just about squeeze around the other side and change those points up there, but how do I change those points over there? Well. Let me introduce you to my uh, assistant today for the video. It's my signalman stick. This is my signalman stick. <laughs> um, bit crude, but it's got a rubber tip on the end, so it's not going to damage anything. And it is handy for getting bits and pieces off my wardrobe and also for uh, in case my daughter plays up. <laughs> anyway, what the idea is we can reach over. Hang on, let's just get this 9F out of the way. We can reach over and very carefully just change those switches and now he's totally missed the shot so now I'm going to have to change them back quickly that was bad timing on my part right okay good race over here and then change Change those like that. There we go. Okay, let's just bring that to a stop, shut off the power, and she should come to a gradual stop. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna pause this a minute and go and grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee. And when we come back, we'll have some more trains running. So stay with me, see you in the break. Come on.
Let's change those points. There we go. Right, now then. It's quite an old model that, and I have cleaned it. Um, yeah, it's working reasonably well, isn't it? Let's come down here a little bit. Right, if we just throw that one down over there to stop. Then we change those points. Reverse. There we go. What should we have that next? I know I'm gonna have that next. Pull those points, pull those points. Bring that to a stop there. The old Sigmund's busy today, isn't he? <laughs> right, change those points. You can see what it's gonna be like when I get the point motors all fitted up with the levers. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Right, let's sit down and let's watch some trains, come on. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think it likes those diamonds too much. <coughs> well, I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll uh, just do that. We'll stop the western over there. That comes my Sigmund stick. Change those switches. And just, I think we'll put that back in the depot for the time being. Bring that to a stop there. And then I think what we'll do is, let's see, plan this move. Right. 
I think what we're going to do, actually, let me just do this. You want to see some trains running, so this is what you got. We're then change that set of points there. Shut off power. And we'll hold him in the loop like that. And I can reach over here and then change those ones like that. And then what we can do is I think now we'll bring the Western back out because we all want to see that. Uh, let's see, turn that one off. Other way. Then we'll change those points. Oop. Those points and those points, that's it. Nice and easy. That's quite an old model, that's why. Um, got to remember that's, it's not got a pickup to what you've got on low coast today. So you will get that problem sometimes. Um, in actual fact, let me just do something a minute. Yeah, um, believe it or not, I've got an Airfix Class 31, which is even older than that. Uh, and that has just got really good pickups uh, that were fitted in the factory. Um, it's a good loco. But anyway, I think I've made my point. No pun intended. All these quips I'm coming out with today, honestly. You'll de-sub when you've heard my jokes. <laughs> Anyway, let's get this on the move. Let's slow it down. That's better, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Right, let's leave that like that. Let's get the Super D out, I think. Change those points, change those points. And we can go and bring this out. He says. Whoop. Let's give it a bit of brake release. There she comes. Now again, you've got four wheels on either side of the loco. So that's a test for it, going around these curves on the layout. Now, it's coming up to the first radius set now. That's coping pretty well around there. Excellent, right, okay. I'm just 
going to reverse those points back to normal. No problem going across that diamond there. Again, because most of the modern locos, um, they can navigate this bit of track work because they've got extra pickups on, on the wheels or certainly the tenders. Whereas that's an older model, um, but it doesn't do too badly. Let's see if I can get this to a crawl. What do you reckon? Uh, if I switch, uh, let's see. On the simulator and brake. There we go, slow things down a bit. Notch it up to 40 on the controller, which is a slowish speed. We can go even less, we can go down to 30. Drop it down to 30, which is on there. Yeah, she's making it fine. Probably about a scale speed of about, say, five to, oh, she's starting to fill it on the curves there. Let's open it up slightly. There we go. It's not bad though. So I've just notched it up to 40 on there. And she's trundling along quite happily, I think. Yeah. The old Super D's making their way around there without a problem at all. Look at that. Okay. Let's, I'll tell you what we'll do, let's really quickly, before I close the video, let's just run that Super D on track two. Let's put it in reverse, so it's running tender first. I know it's not gonna make much difference. It's a brilliant little engine. Let's notch it up a little bit. No problem. Okay, what I'll do is we'll stop the Western over there and then Mr. Signalman stick comes out again changes those points click gone over and I think yeah look we'll slick it over there on number one Here she comes, shutting off the power. Ooh, a bit too soon there. There we go. Right, okay. So we'll close those points. Now what we need to do is I think we'll put the Western over the diamonds and we'll put it onto the where the terminus station is going to be. I think that's what we'll go for. We'll go for that plan. So we have to make sure one thing though is that these points are closed. Uh, hang on. Make sure you've got nothing opposing. Because what happens is if we put a train across here, 
um, it could liven up that track. Um, so this may double check and make sure. I don't think it's going to, but we've got nothing about on that because everything's in the siding and we've thrown the points over to isolate the trains in the siding. So we've got nothing technically on track two, even though the switch is open. So I think what we'll do, we'll make a bold move, pull those points over. And then what we'll do, shut that off. And then we'll go Oh, it didn't like those diamonds too much, did it? Naughty. Let's try it again. More juice. There we go. Okay, so that's there. And then the 9F. Um, if we then change uh, those points and that point and put those back to normal, uh, we can then... Open that switch up over there and make sure, make sure you can go then onto there. Slow it down a little bit. Where's it gone? Oh, that'll do. Um, there we go. So that is my running session. Um, typically, not identically, but typically the sort of moves I would do with the layout in the future in terms of stock changeover and running. And, but obviously things will be different because when it does get up and running, we're going to have freight trains and passenger trains and all sorts of different things going on um but this is just for demonstration purposes only today guys um hope you've enjoyed the video um, i'm going to wrap things up now by saying goodbye thank you very much for all your support don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you soon on the next video and when we see each other again or you see me virtually in the video um hopefully we'll, we'll have some track weathered and the track will start to look a bit more like realistic railway track not uh to a train track at the moment anyway see you soon take care thanks for the comments and uh, god bless and take care bye bye